Okay, uh, Jeff, I say we change gears. Let's go to Chapter 8. we got 20 slides. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. So Chapter 8 was intended to tie together, like a conclusion chapter, a lot of what was talked about early in the book, and uh, really answer the question, what would this look like if you had gone through the whole leadership development model multiple times and you had pretty highly developed leaders, and you're now really truly using something like Hoshin and Connery to align strategic objectives that are well thought out to operational excellence. I used as a case example for that the Scion case, which in fact we had written about in the uh, Toyota Culture book, and we were studying the first few years of Scion. So Scion's been around for a while, uh, and it's had ups and downs. Their sales peaked around 80,000 units a year, and now they're down around 40 to 50,000 units a year. Uh, so some have said that Scion, in fact, is a failed experiment. I don't believe it's a failed experiment, but it certainly needs resuscitating, and what it needs is new product, which is being, where it's being introduced right now. Uh, that, that I believe will take uh, science, science sales, sales back up. up. But, but the important, important thing I thought was that they did a great job of launching Scion in the Toyota way. And again, what I think that this illustrates just in a nice, neat package, whether or not you think Scion in the long term has been a fabulous success or a failure, uh, it was launched really well and really thought through well. And, and what, what it illustrates, illustrates is connecting strategy to operational excellence. Every, Every solution starts with a problem, uh, uh, the, the direction, direction, the challenge uh, needs, uh, needs to, to be somehow developed. And the way we develop it is by uh, going and seeing and uh, understanding what our target population is really like, what are their values. And in this case, the, uh, the starting point of the problem were that it could be shown very easily with data that in America, Toyota owners were older than the average for the industry. Uh, so it was starting to look like a Toyota was an old people's car, particularly gener uh, my generation, the baby boomers. Uh, so many people in their 50s and 60s have owned Toyotas for, for uh, decades, and they would only buy a Toyota, and they're very loyal, but they're now reaching the end of their life cycle. And young people who are 18 to, say, 25, uh, are looking at a Toyota as their parents or even grandparents' car, and they want something more interesting and exciting, so they go to some other brand. So this was uh, uh, kind of a crisis for Toyota, or a cons real concern, uh, because Toyota looks at a vehicle for life as their model, I mean, a, a customer for life. So you enter the customer value stream, and, and you, you get, get your first Toyota that's, that's relatively inexpensive and simple and small, and then, and then as you grow, the car becomes more expensive and elaborate. Uh, what, what they discovered was that uh, the uh, young people had different values uh, than older people. There's different things they cared about, and they needed to really understand the values of uh, these young people, and they had to do uh, their Gemba visits to where young people lived and hung out to really understand young people. So the countermeasure at a big picture, the problem was we need to get young people to enter the Toyota value stream someplace, and uh, they have this image of Toyota that is somewhat negative, uh, that's boring, that it's you know, good quality but not exciting. And they finally concluded the only way to really uh, bring young people into the market who wouldn't come otherwise, who would actually have chosen a different brand, was by starting a new Toyota brand that was focused on young people and 
uh, that could start with a fresh image, and that, create, that led to the creation of Scion as a brand. To grasp the uh, current condition, again, they uh, did a lot of intensive study through Toyota Motor Sales. There were a lot of Gemba visits. The person put in charge of this originally was Jim Lentz, who's now the CEO for all of Toyota North America, and he was prior, prior to that the uh, head of Toyota Motor Sales. At the time that he was assigned to work on this problem of young people in the market, he was a uh, vice president, so he's already very high level, one of the top executives in Toyota Motor Sales, and this became probably his most important job, was leading this effort. And he personally had to go and see and understand young people. What they uh, discovered is that young people, uh, we call them millennials, uh, the echo boomers, there's different t names for them, but they've grown up seeing their parents have pretty loaded vehicles that have many features, really premium sound systems and uh, safety features and a lot of airbags, and they basically wanted all those things in their cars. They wanted Lexus features or high-end Toyota features, uh, but they wanted to pay Corolla prices. They also uh, want to express individuality and are used to being able to have a phone that looks the way they want and screens on their computer that they can customize and home pages they can customize and blue jeans that are customized and you know it's gotten to the point where customization is the water of the day and young people don't want to be part of a mass market that looks like everybody else and uh, so they need some ability to customize the vehicle to make it theirs. Uh, at the same time, it was interesting that they discovered that there was a yearning by young people to belong to a group. And so they want to be individual, yet belong to a group. And another very strong value of young people is fairness. And fairness means that if my friend buys a Scion at a certain price, uh, then I want to, I should get the same price. I shouldn't have to pay more for the same thing. That's not fair. And I don't want to have to haggle and argue uh, to a, with a salesman in order to get what I'm entitled to, which is a fair price. So that also had to be addressed uh, without haggling on the price. Well, Jeff, on, on this note, the aha, I guess, is the individuality you'd get, but to belong to a group, that's an aha. And I think that's probably one of the things they focused well, on. Well, the, they had to focus on all of them. But to me, the aha was, is this whole list. Is that the key characteristics, the key requirements for this entire brand that they called Scion boil down to these five things. Uh, this is kind of like the high-level Hoshin Conry for the Scion brand. These are the themes. And the fact that they did so much study and investigation and looking at data and meeting with experts and observing young people, and when they boiled it down and boiled it down and boiled it down, they could have such a simple list that when people look at it and they know young people, they'll nod their head and say, that makes sense. Now, the individuality and group thing is, is a little bit counterintuitive. That might be something new. The other things are not interesting because they seem so obvious, but the fact that they're obvious means that they got it right, that they were able to get to the essence of the key characteristics that had to be part of the Scion brand. And that synthesis and boiling down of a huge amount of facts and data into a very, very clear vision with clear themes is one of the skill sets that a Toyota leader has to learn. And uh, Jim Lentz learned this through his decades at Toyota and the people, he had a very small team uh, working with him who all had been developed in the Toyota way. So it was very natural for them to go to the GAM, but it was very natural for them, for Jim Lentz himself to say, I can't delegate this. I've got to lead this hands-on. 
it was very natural for them to say we need to boil this down to to a small number of themes. Uh, it's not so natural for most people in most organizations that would end up with very long lists and very complicated lists and uh, statistics behind every one and big reports and you know, so, so anyway, this is elegant in its simplicity. Okay, so the approach to developing Scion and uh, that when you launch a new brand in most companies, you end up with uh, hundreds if not thousands of people involved and long development cycles to, that take years. Uh, this entire brand for Toyota that was critical strategically was led by five people, uh, executives and managers. And uh, you know, to me, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I watched the Saturn process, for example, in GM, and buildings went up and thousands of people were involved. And, it took eight years to develop the first car. In this case, a new brand is created with five people who go and see customers, uh, develop the customer requirements and the business model. And then Jim Lentz hears about the Chevy Celta in Brazil, which is a one-size-fits-all car. It's a simple, basic model that, ha that has for the Brazilian market, it was a low-end car, I mean, a relatively inexpensive car. So it has core features, but since they're all the same, one engine, one transmission, uh, four doors, whatever it was, the configuration is the same. They could get economies of scale in the factory, which reduces the price. But then what they did is they allowed the user to customize the vehicle using, uh, over the internet uh, by adding accessories, and those accessories were added at the dealership. So the core car, and from a factory's point of view, is plain vanilla. But by the time it gets to the customer, it's styled for you. So that fit the customer requirements of saying, we need an inexpensive vehicle that's loaded with features and is customized to the individual. And Again, Jim Lentz being trained as a Toyota leader, his first reaction was, I've got to go see this. So he immediately goes down to Brazil and he studies the Chevy Celta and he says, this is great. This is the, you know, the basic model we need. Uh, they altered the production logistic model a bit uh, first, uh, first of all, they started, started they, they, they used the term monospec, and, and they said there's going to be one specification from the factory's point of view. And then when the cars come in from Japan, because all the first uh, Scions were cars that they were already making in Japan, and that was another way to do this quickly and reduce cost is to use an existing, mo existing models. Uh, those cars, when they brought, get brought into the port in California, they would become a pool, and then when you as a customer order your Scion uh, and configure it the way you want, they actually did a lot of the accessorization right when the car came off the boat and was pulled at the dock. So they created a, a little factory by the dock to accessorize the vehicle. There were some accessories then added by the dealer. Uh, so that was the, and, then, and they had to have a, a just-in-time kind of model of, because when I order what I want, and it's going to be accessorized in California and I'm in Connecticut, I still want my car in the next day or two, or, or three, but I don't want to wait more than three days, because that's another kind of American characteristic, is we're in a hurry, we're not very patient. So they had to make everything happen very fast. And, and this just gives a, a list of accessories, accessories original accessories when they launch this, uh, like, like cargo nets and carbon fiber engine covers, uh, engine covers, excuse me, uh, engine covers and, and exhaust tips and, uh, and rear bumper applications to make the bumper look different and interesting and uh, 
they and LED tail lights that could be different colors, and internally there were LED lights that could be different colors, and so there were. These are all things that can be added to the vehicle after it's already built at the dock or at the dealership. To achieve this goal of having individuality yet feeling part of a group, they uh, created Scion owner groups. They supported Scion owner groups all over the country. And this is one of those Scion owners groups. They got some funding from Toyota uh, to start the group. They would find a leader who would organize the group, and the group would decide what they want to do. Uh, and they would create a website with help from Toyota. And in this case, the, this mission statement from this group in North Carolina said that we are an outlet for Scion owners to gather and share our passion. For Scions, it's with anticipation that we humbly uh, approach this philosophy to enable Scion owners to contribute to the continuing belief in the Scion brand. So obviously, this is a, uh, a real passionate Scion person who's really into the brand and is really trying to promote it. Uh, so uh, they, they, again, they funded and they supported these groups. They also uh, developed a plan for events happening throughout the country. Uh, and if you came in your Scion, you'd get into the event for free. For example, you might get into uh, a big art show or a country music festival, depending on what part of the country you're in and what, you're, what people are interested in. And you get in free if you have a Scion and you get gift, a gift bag and there's an award process for somebody to win some kind of accessories. Uh, and it's sort of revolves around Scion, but it's doing some activity that people like and now they're feeling like they're connected through their ownership of Scion to other people. So the uh, sales marketing approach, I mentioned the logistics approach and the, the car was an existing car. Uh, the sales marketing approach, again, no haggle. So uh, Scion altered the uh, one price model a little bit by calling it pure price. And they, w they said to the dealers, and they had to do a road show and teach and sell Scion because each dealer had to decide Toyota dealer had to decide, do I want Scion in my dealership? And it was their choice. The dealer is told, if you want Scion, you have to follow these rules. And one is that once you set a price for a year for either the vehicle or a service to the vehicle, everybody gets that price. And you can't change it until the next year. Uh, so it's not only the vehicle, but it's even you've got you've had the vehicle for four years. It's out of warranty. You get an oil change on your Scion. It's got to be the same price as anybody else who gets an oil change. They also uh, decided that the standard marketing approach of Toyota Motor Sales, which is to find one big advertising agency that did everything, and most of the money was spent on television, needed to be unbundled and uh, and offered to different marketing advertising groups that had different specialties were good at different things. So for example, some were really good at television, but some others are really good at the internet. Some, another group was really good at organizing events. Uh, so they found the best in each of these areas. They developed the Scion Owners Clubs uh, and for social networking, and again, the events, which it turned out to be over 100 a month across the country, uh, were another way to get networking and belonging. And the regional owners would tailor the events to local tastes. Uh, and uh, one of them was at uh, Knott's Farm in LA, and in Halloween season, they call it not Scary Farm, and they have a Halloween theme. And they had one uh, night that was only for Scion owners, and you get in free if you're a Scion owner. 
The lean approach was to use existing Toyota departments of staff, that is, don't build a new building for Scion, don't hire a whole set of people, don't create a new organization with all the functions needed for a company, but rather use all the existing Toyota departments to add Scion to their responsibilities. The actual headcount in 2007, when they were starting out with Scion, when they launched Scion, were 19 people in headquarters and 40 field staff who work with dealers and work in regions. Uh, so total 59 people for a company Toyota size. Uh, it's, to me, that's pretty remarkable. Use existing models from Japan uh, and use the existing Toyota dealer network. So basically, very little investment was made. What results did they achieve early on? This is in the first, uh, say, three years after launch. They had achieved the youngest age in the auto industry, an age of 30. Eighty percent of these owners had never owned a Toyota, and they might have, and many of them, in fact, had a different brand and switched to the Toyota family. Eight of the top ten models, in fact, were trade-ins uh, from some other car maker. So they would trade in their Ford or their Hyundai or whatever it was and in order to get the Scion. So now they're truly what is are called conquest customers. We, we've conquered this customer and brought them from some competitor to us. It turned out the investment was paid for and the, by the fourth year they were profitable, but they were never asked, the vi Jim Lentz and the vice presidents working on this were never asked to be profitable. They were asked to try to break even, but the focus was on the strategic focus of bringing in people into the market. Now, it turns out that by 2007, sales had dropped significantly, and the reason was very clear. There were no new vehicles introduced, and the vehicles were getting old. And the question is, was, is Scion, was Scion still a success? And the, many of the journalists said, Scion's now a failure. They are looking at today. Last year, they were a success. This year, they're a failure. Uh, Toyota's view is much longer term. Scion achieved what it set out to do, which is to bring younger people to the market. The average age of Toyota owners went down significantly, and part of it was spillover effect, that uh, even this process led to a rethinking of, for example, marketing, and created sort of a youthful feel even in Toyota dealerships and uh, changed some of the image of Toyota. But uh, the fact that sales were down in 2007, what that means to Toyota is we have a challenge, which is let's get new vehicles that young customers want to reinvigorate the brand, and this is going to go on for decades, not just this year. So over the long term, they're still working on it. I think that the sales will be up within the next year or two, uh, and then they'll look like a success again. But over the long term, Scion has a strategic niche which the Vice President of Science said, the metrics we think are important are not about sales or profits, it's about opening the door to Toyota. And that will be a continual struggle, like any other part of Toyota is struggling all the time to be successful. Uh, and they have good years and bad years, but they're always working to uh, meet the challenge of the next step, of the next plateau and Scion hasn't been thrown out because it had a few bad years. It just has to be reinvigorated. In summary, the strategic intent was a high-value automobile that's personalized and provides a sense of community to bring young people into the Toyota family. The innovations were monospec along with customization by accessorization pure price, unbundled marketing, and methods to create a community of owners. And the way those got put into place required operational excellence. It required just-in-time just logistics systems for build-to-order. It required 
TPS to build the basic model at a low cost so they could give a lot of standard features for the money in these vehicles. It required a chief engineer who works with sales to develop the next vehicle that is something that young people really want. It required cooperation across the Toyota enterprise and in fact the enthusiasm was remarkable. All the people I talked to had originally worked on Scion, uh, they were very popular because when others in Toyota or in the dealerships would hear about a young people's brand, it was just fun. It was interesting and everybody wanted to work on it. And they needed high performance small teams uh, to launch the vehicle, to continue its development, to launch the, the brand, to launch the brand, to continue the development of the brand, as well as to uh, make sure these events were high quality and the user groups were high quality and uh, they needed to be high performance because there weren't many of them and costs needed to be kept down. So again, the purpose was bring young people to the Toyota family. Toyota made great strides through Scion, which cost them in the end you know, virtually nothing. And in, this really reflects the principles of the Toyota way, uh, starting with respect for people, which means deeply understanding the customer, not judging the customer, but understanding them and what they want and what they need. Then using continuous improvement to work toward achieving what customers want. It required long-term thinking, for example, thinking about the customer for life and how this investment in Scion was gonna pay off in 10 to 30 years if they could keep these customers for life. It involved a good problem-solving process, understanding the problem, grasping the situation, going and seeing, broadly exploring alternatives, uh, then through PDCA, narrowing it down to the final uh, alternatives that they launched with, and a lot of teamwork within the Scion team with the rest of Toyota with dealers. So all these principles were in action to achieve this strategic objective. So again, what I'm trying to illustrate, this case illustrates well whether you think so far it's been a tremendous success or not so much. It, uh, it's a good example of following the whole process of starting with understanding the challenge, grasping the situation at a high level, developing the architecture of the new business, then uh, getting, working your way down to the specific objectives of your customer and uh, then your operational solutions to meet those objectives and then trying it and developing it and continuously improving it. Well, that, that's excellent explanation. Jeff, I got a question on Scion. Uh, those Conquest customers you were talking about, it'd be, now maybe you have it, maybe you don't, be nice to know how many Conquest customers they had and how many still have a Toyota today because that would be like uh, evidence I, I, I guess. I don't know that would be evidence that they uh, yeah that would be longer term evidence that Scion itself was successful in the long term up to this point and I don't know the answer to that I didn't continue to follow Scion personally I'm not all that interested in Scion in the long, I mean, how Scion's doing. I'm not interested in giving Scion a letter grade and saying it was an A, B, C, D, or E, or F. I just find it useful to illustrate how all these concepts came together to create a brand that at least initially met all the objectives of the company. Yeah, and it's such a, a good compact example. Right. So I like it as I an mean, example. compact, it's huge, but. <laughs> Okay, very good. Peter, any questions uh, on the chat? And then I know we'll maybe do three questions and call it a day. Thank you so much. There are uh, no questions on the chat. Um, I f one question, it was uh, regarding on slide 14 in the previous uh, chapter. Uh, there was a symbol on which was clearly uh, the text, a daily activity stops when target is met. So. Yes, you see it, it's the, the green picture. So, met target, no new daily activity. 
Does that mean that when the target is met, that the daily activity stops? Uh, in this case, the uh, daily activity, what the, you have to understand, this is dynamic. So uh, we have objectives, we have an objective for the year, but we have short-term targets. So apparently they met their short-term targets. I don't know what it was, a week target. So maybe for the rest of this week, we're not going to work on this. We're going to focus on other areas because they have safety, they have cost, they have human resource development. So for the rest, this may be only for the rest of the week uh, that we're not working on this. We'll start it up again Monday on our next target condition. Uh, it would not be true for the rest of the year. They wouldn't be done for the rest of the year. They would be done for a short period of time. Yeah. Okay, that's clear. Thank you. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. I'm going to stay behind and promote people in case they have questions about your course. But what a great series. I know I'll talk to you tomorrow as well, and we'll talk about the eight-minute uh, intros. But uh, thank you so much for today. You did a great, great job. Thank you. thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us and listening. Hope you have a nice rest of the day. Thank you, everybody. You guys can uh, stay behind. I'll promote everybody.